G'day guys, I'm here to hopefully bring to you part three of this three video series showcasing all of the towers in Bloons Tower Defense 5 and all of their upgrades. I really hope I finish it. I seriously, um, I might be able to finish it, I might not be able to finish it. We'll see how it goes. But anyways, launching straight into it, I left off at the Monkey Village. I skipped the Monkey Buccaneer because I didn't have any water in the last level and I didn't do the super monkey because he's a long winded and complicated thing. So let's go back to the monkey buccaneer. A reasonable um, tower. It's quite good actually if you've got um, say a level with a lot of water on it and there's only like I think there's one of these levels. It's an intermediate level where there's a lot of water, hardly any islands and not much else and it's one sneaking path. Don't worry seriously monkey buccaneers on their own are fairly good strong towers now straight off the bat they can only be placed on water and they shoot a single heavy dart that can pop up to five balloons each let's see that in action yeah but it's sort of straight line shot so if you don't get five balloons in a row for it to shoot at it'll only hit as many as it can upgrades Ah, sorry about that, I got a message. Upgrade path one. Yeah, let's get rid of this level and get all this money because I'm going to need all of this money because the towers I'm about to explain are very expensive. Monkey Buccaneer, path one, upgrade one, faster shooting. That's always good. Upgrade two. Much longer range for the cannon. Let's have a look at the range. Have a look at the circle. Upgrading. Well, I wouldn't say that's much longer range, but whatever. It's longer range. On its own, one monkey buccaneer can't really do that much against balloons, but you put three or four together clustered really tightly, and they can do some serious damage to balloons. Path two, upgrade one. Grape shot. Sprays out a blast of four sharp grapes for additional poppage. Let's just have a look at this thing in action, as is. Oh, this isn't a good example. But yeah, it's shooting darts a little bit quicker. Um, it can shoot them for more of a range. All in all, at the moment, it's still a fairly worthless tower. It's not that powerful. But if we give it grape shot... Let's get this into the scene a little bit. Come on. See how these four extra shots? They're grapes, essentially. They also pop balloons. I don't know how many balloons each grape shot can pop. It might be two, it might be five. I'm not sure. But it just adds a little bit more poppage and a little bit more of a um, an arc for the, shoot, uh, the shots to cover. Now, this is interesting. Crow's Nest. Allows the Buccaneer to detect and target camo balloons. Does not grant detection to other towers. Fair enough, but as a tower itself, it is a water alternative to essentially something like the Ninja Monkey. I'm sure you have to spend a little bit of money to get to this point, but it can detect camo balloons. And if you place them at really good spots, then you can wipe out quite a lot of camo balloons and they won't be an issue on levels where there's a lot of water. Moving on, we have... Path one attack. Uh, sorry, path one upgrade three. Destroyer attacks super duper fast. Let's see that in action. Now we saw it was like one shot, one shot. Okay, so it, it's pretty much like triple the firing speed. I think either triple or quadruple. That makes it a lot more useful. And as you buy that upgrade, if you look at it. I've already bought it, so you can't do the comparison, but I can tell you right now, the value of what your tower was worth currently before that upgrade and the cost of that upgrade, it makes that upgrade worth it because you're effectively tripling the popping power of your tower for what? Less than the cost of buying another one exactly like it. So it's worth it. And finally, upgrade number four. Aircraft carrier rapidly launches monkey ace pilots that strafe the area with darts. It's, it's an experiment. Uh, experiment. I can't talk today. It's an expensive upgrade, 
but it is well worth it. Look what happens. You get all these little monkey aces. I think you have three continuously. No. Yeah, I think you do. You have three monkey aces. They're kind of like the normal monkey aces. They shoot darts in all directions, but they also shoot darts in the direction that they are facing, and they kind of go for the balloons. So yeah, lots of bloom popping power all of a sudden with the monkey buccaneer. I gotta admit, that's fairly effective. These ceramic balloons are being popped by only this monkey aces. Look at them go. Only just now did one of my sun gods have to kick in. Yeah, that's that's fairly effective. Anyways, moving on. We're gonna get rid of this, let my monkey my sun gods do the work. Let's plonk another one down and talk about path two. Now, first of all, let's see. Upgrade three adds a powerful independently firing cannon to the buccaneer. Okay, let's look at the buccaneer in action normally. Separate cannon that fires independently. Never really paid attention to this. Okay, so that's normal. Now, this is with the extra independent firing cannon. Oh, I see. It's a cannon and it does explosive shots. So, it's a proper cannon and it can pop lead balloons. So, therefore, that upgrade allows your monkey buccaneer to pop lead balloons. That's pretty useful. So, it's got camo detection. It can pop lead balloons. It can pop black balloons. It can pop any type of balloon if you get that upgrade. And lastly, the special ability, Monkey Pirates. MOAB takedown ability, blah, blah, blah. Takes hold of the nearest MOAB class balloon with a grappling hook and brings it down. Zom God balloons are immune to this. Okay, let's look at it in action. Grabbing it, bringing it in, and... Oh, wow. Completely destroyed it. There you go. It's an MOAB killer, but unlike the Bomb Tower's special ability, this completely destroys it and everything inside it straight away. Um, with the Bomb Tower's special ability, all you do is break it open and, and then you've got to contend with all its children. So there you go, Monkey Buccaneer. Get a few of these on the field and you can smash a lot of BFBs and MOABs at will. But remember, the big black ZOMG... Big blimp, it's immune to that, so you can't use it. So you get rid of that. Moving on next to... Da, da, da. Banana farm. Everybody loves a banana farm because they make you rich. They cost... Well, a fair bit. Uh, I think it's 1,080 or something on hard. 850 on easy, which is this is on right now. Banana farms. Grow bananas that you can collect... To turn into cash. When your farm produces some bananas, collect them by moving your mouse over them. Do not leave them too long, however, or they will spoil. In other words, they'll disappear. So when you build a banana farm, like what I've been doing here, you just hold your mouse near them and everything that gets thrown out, you will be able to collect. And it turns it into money. Now, at this, I think at the beginning, it only shoots out four bananas. And they're worth 20 bucks each. So yeah, you're spending 850 bucks on your banana farm for a return of $80 every round. That sounds pretty crappy. You have to go through 11 rounds just so you can start getting into the profits. However, the upgrades are what makes this much more worth it. Path 1, upgrade 1. Grow 6 bananas each round instead of 4. Okay, so now it's throwing out 6, which gives you 120 bucks all up if you hold your mouse near it and let the bananas catch into your mouse. Upgrade 2. Banana Plantation. Grows 13 bananas each round. So now it's gone from 120 to... What's that? Uh, 260. So it's a little bit more than double. Now you're getting that much every round. Upgrade path 2, the first upgrade, 
Bananas last 20 seconds instead of the usual 10. So you get a little bit more time to move your mouse away, do other things, and then move it back to collect the bananas. They'll last a little bit longer on the screen before they disappear. Upgrade 2. Each banana or box of bananas is worth 50% more cash. That is an interesting one. I like that one because now the bananas get spit out, or in this particular instance, instead of being worth 20 per banana bunch, it's 30. So now I'm getting $390 worth of bananas every round if I collect all the bananas from it. And you can have more than one of these. Other than, like you see, I've got four of them here. I'll explain these later in a second, actually. But yeah, you've yeah, got four of them. They're close clustered I keep my mouse in the middle and all the bananas or the boxes or whatever they just fall on my mouse no problems it's kind of like you move your mouse there and then just leave it there and you reap the rewards the only problem with that is you can either choose to get the money or if you have to do stuff with your towers then you might lose a few boxes upgrade path one upgrade three Banana Republic generates 25 bananas every round instead of 13. So now all of a sudden you're making 500 cash every round if you don't have this upgrade on. If you have valuable bananas on, then you're making 750 per round. Now it's starting to become sort of like make a little bit more sense as to why you would bother putting your money into this because as you upgrade these banana farms, especially with these much higher upgrades, then you reap the rewards a lot more quickly and all of a sudden you can find yourself incredibly rich so when you buy that upgrade four this is probably the best version of the banana farm in my opinion produces 10 boxes of bananas every round each box is worth 200 cash now remember that number is not adjusted for if you have valuable bananas purchased so really it's 300 cash per box let me just buy them. In fact, I don't even have to get that. I've got four of them right here, and let me show you. Hold my mouse there. Boxes of bananas get thrown out slowly. Depends on how long the level will last. Because the boxes aren't coming out very fast, I'd say this level is a long level. But for some levels where there's only one balloon that comes out, or one blimp or something, you'll just see all these boxes flying out really quickly, and you can gather them really quickly. But yeah, slow but sure. Here, I'll speed it up a little bit. You get all that cash, and that's why I have 182,000 monkey money in the game right now to spend, instead of, what would it be, maybe 40, 30 if I'm lucky. When you get this upgrade, you're reaping the rewards quite a bit. Trust me, you want banana farms. Without them, you would not be able to last long past round 85. Even if you get to round 85, you probably could, even on hard. But past round 85, where you start to get ridiculous amounts of blimps and so forth, you're going to need really powerful towers just to keep up with all of that. And um, yeah, you can only afford that if you have a few of these and you've been collecting from them for a while. So the strategy is to reap the rewards of a banana farm as much as possible, try and get one down on the field and upgrading it as early as possible in your game. I remember I was waiting until about round 20 before I got a banana farm down. I got ninja, actually I'm discussing strategies. I'll discuss those in another video. Let's talk about the banana farm's other path. Okay, I'll upgrade that a couple of times. Bananas, no, this is it. Path two, upgrade three, monkey bank. Generates 450 cash each round, which gets stored. Earns 10% interest each round and holds up to 5,000 cash. Withdraw the cash at any time. So, you turn it into a bank, and all of a sudden you don't have to hold your mouse there. You can just set it and forget it in every 3 or 4 or 5 rounds. Go to your bank, click on the collect balance down here, and whatever is in there will go straight to your cash and reset to zero. Let me show that in action. Have a look at the collect balance. Now it said 450 cash for every round. 
Here, let me just select that. So this must be a reasonably long round. We're about halfway through the round now. At 450, or I should say, at the end of every single round, whatever is in the collect balance for each banana farm that's a bank, then the interest goes on top of whatever is in there. If that makes sense. So, oh, okay. This bank is... Ah, oh, I've got valuable bananas. So, it's more than 450. It's like 630. There you go. And it went from 630 to 693 at the end of the round, which makes sense, because 10% of 630 is 63. 630 plus 63 is 693. There you go. Proof of concept. It works. Um, and just because of the interest alone, when you have monkey banks, or banana banks, whatever these things are called, it's in your best interest to try and let it keep on collecting balance up and up and up and up and up. So you're reaping the rewards of the interest as much as possible. It kind of lets you collect more in a shorter amount of time as far as cash is concerned. That's how these banks work. And the fourth and final upgrade, which doesn't have a special ability, mind you, just to take note, monkey... Banana Investments Advisory. It's essentially the same thing as the bank, only instead it generates a thousand each round, which is a little bit more than double, and it's twenty percent interest on uncollected funds, withdraw at any time. Instead of a maximum of five thousand in the bank, it gets to twenty thousand before it caps off. So what you want to do is you want to collect the uh, balance of all of these banks just before they hit their maximum. So if it's upgrade three, collect your balance before. It gets to 5,000 just before. When you have one of these banana investments advisories, yeah, the big silver building, then collect it just as you get to like 19,000 or something. Collect the balance then. Because the interest, because it's 20%, it's ridiculously big every single round. You usually wait about five or six rounds before you collect your balances, okay? That's that explained. Mind you, I used to use banks quite a lot until I started making these videos and then I realized that even though these banks are convenient because they kind of set and forget for a few rounds, yes, you do have to hold your mouse near these banana plantations or research facilities to collect the cash. It's annoying, but you do collect overall more cash more quickly if you go for path one. So I recommend path one. Now... Mortar Tower, good old Mortar Tower, it was good for popping camo balloons and lead balloons and not much else back in Bloons Tower Defense 4. Now in Bloons Tower Defense 5 with a few new towers, it's almost a completely useless tower in my opinion, but what it does is, it's like the sniper tower in that it has an unlimited range. What you do is you place it somewhere, and then when you've placed it, or when you click on it, you get the chance to lay down its target, which is where you want it to fire. It will bombard that area periodically, regardless. That's what the mortar tower does. It uses bombs, which are explosives, so they've got similar properties to the explosives from bomb towers. You know, they can't, they can pop lead balloons, they can't pop black balloons or zebra balloons, that sort of thing. Let's see, does it say anything else? Target. Target ground, launches explosive mortars, far away track, room, other towers. Yeah, so like sniper towers, just put them in some insignificant corner of the map that you're not going to use for anything, and they can sit there, no worries. Upgrade path one. Upgrade one increases accuracy, makes your mortar shots more accurate. Now, this target that you see here, mortars when fired from this monkey, whether or not it's close or whether or not it's far away, it will land somewhere randomly within this whole area okay get this upgrade and all of a sudden your shots are now grouped a lot more tightly quite useful in my opinion upgrade 2 bigger blast heavy ordnance delivers a bigger explosion radius let's look at it in action as is okay 
it's shooting the explosions are you know a reasonable size gee I wish it wasn't blimps because these sun gods are kicking in maybe I should move them back what do you think <laughs> uh, let's get this level over and done with give me something without blimps but yeah as you can see it's firing and the explosion is about the size of a blimp to be honest now if I get bigger blast boom the explosion radius is now almost twice as big I don't know how many balloons that each explosion can pop but I know it's quite a few it's kind of a little bit more powerful than a bomb tower I think don't quote me on that that's upgrade path one upgrade path two Rapid reload increases the attack speed of the mortar. Why not? That's useful. Upgrade 2, burny stuff. A touch of monkey napalm pops additional balloons every 2 seconds after impact for 6 seconds. Ah, yes, I know of this one. Watch this. I'm going to deselect and reselect so I can retarget. Now, watch, happens, watch what happens when I do this. These balloons, when they're popped... See, they're burning, and as it says here, pops additional balloons every two seconds after impact for six seconds. In other words, over six seconds, each balloon that's on fire will pop an additional three times, unless it's been popped by another tower. If it's popped by another tower, then it loses the burn, and therefore, um, yeah, <laughs> loses that ability. It's kind of like the ice tower's pops balloons while frozen you know one pop for every two seconds or something like that similar to that effect but slower and less effective now upgrade path one upgrade three balloon buster balloon buster mortars smash through two layers of balloons at once so every shot you bring down a balloon two layers instead of one effectively doubling the usefulness of that tower that's pretty good value for money if you like these mortar towers. And let's see, upgrade four. Devastatingly large explosions and each pops through five layers of balloons. Okay, so now you're making your tower two and a half times more effective than it was. And the explosions are bigger. So let's see how big the explosion is right now, as is without that upgrade. So it's about that. Oh yeah, okay, that's a much bigger explosion. That is massive. Unfortunately, it doesn't have camo detection, so it's not popping those camo balloons. But if it did, five layers popped every single time. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty decent. Kind of reminds me of the sniper tower. What was he doing? He was popping through two per layer, four per shot, seven layers per shot, 13 layers per shot. So if you've got a few of those targeting one area, they'll bring down all the balloons in that area pretty quickly. Now let's look at upgrade path two. Let's see. Camo balloons. Ah, signal flare. Camo balloons popped by this tower permanently lose their camo status and can be attacked by towers without camo detection. You know, that's all nice and well, but... You spent a lot of money getting to that point to be able to use the camo detection from this tower, so not sure it's a great upgrade, especially when you have stuff like this for the monkey village being able to show all the towers in its range camo balloons. I don't think camo balloons are enough of an issue in this game to worry about that upgrade. But here we go. Upgrade number four for path two. Special ability time. Artillery battery. This sounds a lot like the Mortar Tower's main expensive upgrade, last upgrade, from Bloons Tower Defense 4, to be honest. Shoots mortar shells three times as fast. Pop an ore ability. Bombards the screen for five seconds, popping every balloon one time per second and immobilizing all balloons during that time does not affect a Moe B class balloon. So in other words, it'll pop all balloons on the screen five layers over five seconds and freeze them. 
but it doesn't do anything to MOABs. Let's see that in action. First of all, let's just bang, bang, bang. Ah, I see. This was supposed to go through... Oh no, it wasn't supposed to go through two per layer. That's right. That was this upgrade path. But it's burning everything, which is good. Now let's do the pop and ore ability. All the balloons froze. And it's regardless of all of these explosions and stuff, it looks like that's all just cosmetic, really. It doesn't mean anything. Basically, whether or not those explosions happen on balloons, the balloons get brought down five layers over five seconds. So there you have it. Another way to pop all of the balloons. Not a great special ability in my opinion if you have other towers that have special abilities that get rid of all the balloons. But anyways, that's the mortar tower explained. Used to be pretty decent and I used to use it a fair bit. I used to have at least one in every game in Balloons Tower Defense 4. In this game it seems that, um, yeah, it's not money well spent, so avoid that. <laughs> Dartling Gun. This is an interesting tower. I'm going to place it up here somewhere. If I can. Nope. Alright, screw that. I'll place it here then. Just give me a, give me a patch of land, anything. Here we go. Oop. I went over something. It was there. There we go. Finally, I got it down. Dartling Gun is an interesting gun because, as you can see, it faces where my mouse is. And it has an unlimited range. So all you have to do is put your mouse where you want it to fire and it will fire in that direction. A continuous stream of darts. Let's see if the explanation has anything else other than what I just... Yeah, you control how effective it is. Kind of sucks if you have these, so you're probably better off having monkey banks if you're going to use a lot of dartling guns. But let's see it in action. So yeah, I have to have my mouse here. I can have it anywhere along the line, so I can still sort of pick up the bananas. But yeah, it's shooting darts in the direction of wherever my mouse is. It's not too bad. It takes a bit of management. Personally, I like stuff that, you know, you don't have to worry about maintaining. So, Dartling Gun, I never really use it. But it is a useful tower, and a lot of people do use it. Because it has some amazing upgrades. It makes it an incredibly powerful tower. Look, you can choose to go for there, or you can choose to go for these ones instead. But as is, it's a fairly... It's not a powerful tower to start off with, but let's look at the upgrades. Path 1. Upgrade 1. Focused firing greatly reduces the spread of the gun. Now, if you can see, the darts, they kind of come out in a fairly wide spread. It's not very accurate. Get this upgrade. And the darts are now much more accurate. That's that's a lot tighter than it was. Trust me, you've decreased the spread by about 60% or something like that. Upgrade 2. Faster barrel spin makes gun fire much faster. That's always good. Why not? I think that's almost twice as fast now. Mind you, I think these darts can only pop one balloon at a time, so it's kind of like a fast firing monkey sort of a fast fire. What are these called? Dart monkey. That you can sort of tell which way to shoot. Upgrade path two, upgrade one. Powerful darts. Makes darts shoot with greater velocity. Darts move faster and can pop three balloons each. So, okay, now the darts travel faster and your tower can pop three times as many balloons. For that small upgrade, I think that's definitely worth it. Let's have a look at that in action. Yeah, they are definitely going fast. Oh, crikey. Okay, this is the Zom ZOMG in action. Let's just bring him down quick. Come on, bust open. And while that's happening, because um, I don't think I'll be able to show you this upgrade in any great detail. There's too many balloons on the map. Upgrade 2. Shoots specially modified darts that can hurt 
any balloon type. Okay, so now they can bring down frozen balloons and lead balloons as well. That's kind of useful. Saves you having to get a monkey town if you just get these things. Uh, let's see. Upgrade path one. Upgrade three. Laser cannon. Converts the gun into a super powerful laser cannon. But blasts from this cannon can pop 13 balloons each. Uh, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a whole ceramic balloon gone. Can pop frozen balloons and have increased attack rate. Okay, let's have a look at that in action. Okay, let's have a look at that in action without blimps in the screen. Come on, give me a level without blimps. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. It's going to town on those ceramic balloons. Let's hope this level is... Yeah, here we go. Ah, I see. It only goes to town... It can only do one damage onto the ceramic part of a balloon, but other than that, it chews through the balloons with no ease at all. So, so long as the balloon isn't ceramic, it goes through 13 layers of it. If the balloon is ceramic, then it goes and pops one layer, which means, yeah, it has to do 10 hits on the ceramic part before... Yeah, see, it's just cleaning up all the balloons. So long as it's not ceramic, it does one-shot kills to anything that's rainbow or less. That's pretty good. That's not too bad at all. Clean it up. But there's another upgrade. Upgrade 4. Costs 46... Costs around 50,000. That's a lot. The Ray of Doom. I like the sound of that. Let's have a look at it and see how it goes. The Ray of Doom is a persistent solid beam of balloon destruction. Okay. Something I need to explain here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Basically, it pops 100 balloons every time it pulses. Now, I know it said a constant beam of balloon destruction, but trust me, this beam, in practice, in the game, is not constant. It pulses incredibly fast. I don't know how fast it pulses, but it's fairly fast. And it has the ability to chew through... Sorry about that, I think that was a fire truck. I'm tucked away in the middle of nowhere in a whole bunch of back streets, right in the corner of nowhere, and a fire truck just came through. Okay, that's unusual. Anyways, this beam, <laughs> getting back to it. Yeah, this beam, it pulses fairly fast, and each pulse can pop up to 100 balloons in one pulse but it doesn't do 100 balloons worth of damage to each balloon. No, it only pops each balloon once. So if you had, say, 100 balloons on the line of sight, it would be at its most effective. If you only have two or three blimps, then you have it... Um, it's only using about 1% of its power or something like that. It's... yeah. Get a few of these on the field and they'll mash up pretty much everything pretty quickly for a fairly reasonable price for what they are but as I said they require maintenance you have to have your mouse pointing in the right direction and with you with your monkey banana farms it yeah it's up to you whether or not you want to use it it's a powerful a very powerful um, tower with this upgrade in fact every time I see YouTube videos of people playing this game and they use these dartling guns they always take them to this upgrade instead of the other upgrade probably because it's such a damn good upgrade but anyways that's that I'm going to show you the other upgrade that seemingly no one uses let's upgrade it a couple of times now what's upgrade three for path two hydro rocket pods shoots vicious little missiles instead of darts hydro rockets have sharp tips that can pop black balloons okay so they have explosives, like bomb towers, but they can pop black balloons, which means they don't suffer from black balloon fever like the bomb and mortar towers do. That's fairly useful. No idea how strong these explosions are, how much they can pop. As you can see, the area radius is not 
small, but it's not massive either. And finally, the special ability. Bloon Area Denial System, the BADS. Covers a wide area with each shot. Enables the Rocket Storm ability. Rocket Storm shoots out a missile towards the nearest 100 balloons on the screen. Ouch, let's do that right now. Okay, that was a fail because the balloons were here. <laughs> Alright, let's do that again. Only with it here so we can see it in action. Oh yeah. Well, I get the feeling that those 100 balloons just said disappear. It's basically a goodbye 100 balloons button. Unfortunately, it's totally useless against... Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Useless against blimps of any sort, so... Screw that. Yeah, this is all interesting, but... I can now see why everyone goes for the other upgrade. <laughs> Anyways, that's that. Second last tower to explain. Spike Factory, an interesting, interesting little tower. Has some interesting upgrades. Can be quite useful. I'll explain the uh, how it works. Basically, you set it and forget it. It's kind of like the tack shooter. It sort of does its thing in an area around it periodically. You don't have to set pro target priority or anything like that. It just generates a pile of road spikes. Essentially, half piles of these. We, these road spikes can pop 10 balloons. The road spikes that are spinning out now and putting on the road like that. They are piles of five spikes. Uh, it does it fairly slowly. And other than that, there is nothing special about it at all. So it is a attacking and defending tower. It depends on how you use it. But it has some good upgrades. Look at this. Path 1. Upgrade 1. Bigger stacks. Generates larger piles of spikes per shot. In other words, okay, now it generates road spikes at piles of 10 like this. As you can see, they're a little bit thicker. But it still spits them out at the same speed, etc, etc. Upgrade 2. Cuts through lead like a hot spike through lead. So these spikes can now pop any balloon at all. I'm um, actually, don't quote me on that. It might not be able to pop frozen balloons, but I don't know. I don't see why not. I don't see why a red hot spike can't pop a frozen balloon. Wouldn't make sense in the real world, but this is a game. So yeah, don't quote me on that. Uh, if you don't use ice towers, then just consider this a tower that has spits out red spikes that can pop anything, pretty much. Upgrade path 2, upgrade 1, faster production increases the rate of spike reduction. Upgrade 2 is pretty much the same thing. By doing a whole bunch of fictional stuff to this fictional tower, rate of production increases even more. So now it's spitting out these... If you put it on fast, yeah. 10 spikes, 10 spikes, 10 spikes, 10 spikes, 10 spikes, 10 spikes. It puts it in a... This is how it works. The tower will only spit out road spikes onto a path within its range. And which part of path within its range it spits them out onto, it's completely randomized. Now you're thinking, oh yeah, this is all nice and well, but it's not a very good attacking tower. Why would I bother with these? Well, there are a couple of good upgrades coming. Path 1, Spiked Ball Factory. Modified to produce heavy but vicious sharp spiked balls instead of regular spikes do extra damage to ceramic balloons okay fair enough so now it produces these things that bring down ceramic balloons pretty quickly sounds good to me but were ceramic balloons really an issue in the past i'm not sure upgrade four spiked mines rigged with heavy explosives the spiked balls are set to go off when they lose all their spikes Okay, so basically, when it loses all of its spikes, there's one last hurrah, it explodes, giving it more popping power, which might mean these things are now two, three, four times as effective as before. Sounds good to me. Depends on how many they pop. Wow, that's a lot of Zoma Gods, actually. I should do something about that. Yeah, let's start.
Whoops. Okay, I did a mistake. I've got a damn sun god and it's pretty useless right now. Yeah, yeah, I screwed up. I screwed up big time. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Sorry guys, I'm just doing a little bit of maintenance just to make sure I don't lose so I can explain to you the other path. Let's see, give it a monkey town somewhere close by. Alright, pop me some blimps. Yeah, what you saw then was a preview to what you can do with one of the upgrades for the Super Monkey. Uh, it's, it's actually quite complicated as to what happens. It's a lot more complicated than what you see. Saw, I'm not going to explain it to you. I'm just going to tell you that just pretend you didn't see that. Okay, so yeah. That's that upgrade. Um, spike balls, they do explosions. Oh yeah, they're pretty good against ceramic balloons. If you have one of these towers, it's not very useful. But if you have three or four, they can completely blanket an area of path. And yeah, they can stop a lot of balloons and blimps and so forth in their tracks. Why did I say blimps? Well, because if you go and buy one of these things, and instead of going down upgrade path one, you go down path two. Upgrade 3 is a very, very good thing. MOAB Shredder Spikes. Super hard rendering engine driven razors are specially engineered to really hurt MOAB class balloons. In other words, it brings down blimps fairly easily. These spikes really hurt blimps. I can tell you right now that it's actually these sun gods that are really hurting the blimps right now, not this. But if you have 3 or 4 of these, cover an area blimps they just die really quickly and finally upgrade 4 special ability lays down a thick carpet of spikes over the whole track very useful for moments like this watch this boom spikes everywhere all over every part of every path of the track can be quite useful I've used a tactic where I build six or seven or eight of these in one area and then I'd click through all eight of their special abilities the whole map just gets covered with thick layer of spikes and pretty much cleans up almost everything really good against MOABs because it has the MOAB shredder uh, it's just really good against everything good tower good to get you out of trouble and another alternative to bringing down blimp class balloons in other words specifically these ZOMGs that are incredibly tough and hard to deal with. Speaking of hard to deal with, let's just do that again. And also make these guys shoot a lot quicker. Because right now, we're struggling. But that's that explained. This video has gone on a lot longer than I wanted it to. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save my bacon here by... Let me show you how this can help bring down all of these Zoma gods. Now the front ones are pretty intact, but no, the front ones are in big trouble, but the back ones are pretty intact. There we go. There's an example of what you can do. You can just cover the whole area. I don't know how many... Yes, they do disappear after a while, but I'm sure the tax would have done their job by the time you needed them to. Uh... Pfft. Good tower. Seriously consider using it. And it looks like, yeah, I've definitely run out of time. This has gone too long. I, it looks like this is going to be a four video in a three video series of explaining all these towers because I'm then going to upgrade the Super Monkey and show you how it works because there is quite a bit to explain with that last upgrade I accidentally showed you. Um, also, let's make these guys shoot faster. Yeah, I survived the level, but I don't care because this is easy and this is a tutorial video.
I will explain in the next video the Super Monkey and all of its upgrades, and I will try and go through as many of the agents as I can. Yes, you can use these special agents. You buy them using monkey cash. Not this cash, but note cash, which is another fictional money inside the game. And, yeah, if you use special agents, then you can save yourself some money early on in the game. So, in any, instead of having to waste some money on some towers at the beginning, what you do is you use your special agents and they will pop the first 20 30 rounds worth of balloons for you all the while you can just use all of your money straight away to start producing bananas from banana farms and put yourself in a much stronger position for later on and they can also help you on challenges i'll explain all of that or as much of it as i can in the next video see you later